In 2 Timothy 3.1, Paul warned us that in the last days, perilous times will come. We're living in some challenging times, some strange times, and some fast-moving times. Last week, the president declared a national emergency. Then the governor declared a state of emergency in North Carolina because of the rapid spread of the coronavirus. No longer was it just an issue in China on the other side of the world. It was in the United States. We were shocked on Thursday with the sudden cancellation of Winterfest. Then the president called for a national day of prayer, and the governor of North Carolina issued a mandatory ban on mass gatherings of 100 or more Saturday evening at 5 p.m., causing churches to scramble to determine how best to respond. Schools will close for at least two weeks. Some national health experts are predicting it could take weeks and even months for things to return to normal. With the avalanche of information coming from many different sources, it's difficult to know what to do. Here's what I don't know. I don't know what the health experts know about the coronavirus. I don't know the governor's motives. Some see his decision as political because they exempted retail establishment. Others question his legal authority to arbitrarily choose the number 100 as the cap for mass gatherings. That's for the judicial system to work out. Third, I don't know who has or doesn't have the virus. It's been said that the symptoms could take five to 12 days to manifest themselves. Fourth, I don't know how long the emergency status is going to last. There are too many unknowns for anyone to accurately predict the future. In fact, things could get worse before they get better. Here's what I do know. Number one, God's got this, and our response should be one of faith and not fear. I know that's easier said than done, but because it is out of our hands, we must depend on God. God is our refuge and strength. Secondly, God expects us to trust Him and to find creative ways to continue to minister to our congregations that are significant and safe. Thirdly, God will provide for the loss of income. I know some churches operate on a week-by-week -week income basis, and any services canceled lead to a decrease in income. If necessary, send a letter to your members with a self-addressed stamped envelope and a letter encouraging them to trust God and continue giving to the needs of the church and encourage online giving if you have that capability. Fourth, God's church will prevail. I don't know if Satan is behind everything that's going on, but I do know he will certainly try to use the situation to further his purposes, but the gates of hell will not prevail. So how should we respond? As I said earlier, live in faith and not fear. Don't yield to the mass hysteria and panic buying. Two, pray for our political and ecclesiastical leaders to make sound, fact-based decisions not based on politics or emotions. Third, communicate with your congregation and other pastors. Stay informed with what's going on in the news, but don't binge on the news. Use social media to stay connected and inform your people about what they can expect from their pastor and church. Stay engaged. Fourth, develop creative ways to provide resources for your families to have a worship service at home if the situation continues to decline and further restrictions on gatherings are issued. Fifth, stay in touch with other pastors to determine how they're handling the crisis and share ideas. There's safety in the multitude of counsel. We're going to have a special web page developed with resources and links to other resources that you can access. If you have some ideas, send them to us, and we'll include those. Be sure and minister to the elderly and needy and make sure their needs are being met. And listen to the healthcare professionals. Take necessary precautions against infection. We're in uncharted waters. The way forward is not clear, and many unanswered questions remain. Know that we're praying for you at the state office and stand ready to assist you if you find yourself in a situation where you need our help. The churches of God in Western North Carolina should comply with all legal restrictions, and we should all do our part to minimize the spread of this disease. We have a choice. We can complain about the darkness, or we can light a candle and try to find new avenues of ministering to our people. Remember, God is in control. He will take care of his children. God bless you.